Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. Alright, so we're finishing up the Doom board game right now. We're looking at the Cyber Demon. This is going to be the big one. Now I'm probably going to do this video in two parts. I'll probably do a part one and a part two, uh, just to kind of uh, make it easier on my end to do things. Um, as you can see, I've already got the layer of black on there, and the Cyber Demon is divided up into sort of, uh, I guess, three, I guess you could call them layers. Uh, there's the sort of undercoat that is uh, the sort of bloody, uh, you know, fleshy bits. There's the sort of overcoat, that's to say the armor, the, the chitinous armor. Uh, and then there are the actual cybernetic bits, which are, you know, on his knee here and on his feet and all that kind of stuff here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with the undercoat. Or we're going to start with the undercoat, that is to say the... Um, the sort of bloody underlayer first. And to start, we're gonna uh, use my deep red, and I will all, yeah, <laughs> I will run all of the colors at the bottom of the screen so you know what colors we're gonna be using. Getting a little bit of paint out here. And I am using a, uh, a medium-sized Reaper brush. It's uh, just a standard uh, one gauge base brush, I believe here. Uh, so we're gonna be using this. And I think I'm gonna start with the face. So we're just gonna, you know, uh, get all of the face and uh, the the sort of neck and surrounding areas, but we don't want to go over the the, the chitin part. Uh, that we're going to do with a separate color. I'm using this brush because it is a little bit of a larger brush, but it's not so large that I can't get into the sort of little deep in-between lines that are going to be, you know, like right here on his gut and, uh, uh, you know, and, and some other surrounding areas here. Uh, so hopefully this will be able to get the job done a little bit quicker, but still give me the right amount of precision that I need. Uh, and as you can kind of tell, I uh, am trying to leave the teeth uh, black for now, because uh, I am just going to go over those with another color later on. If you get a little bit of paint on them, don't panic. Uh, that's just something that might happen. Sorry, you might be able to hear in the background, my cats are, uh, are playing. They're running all over the place. <laughs> and then I've got a neighbor, I think, in my building who's got a dog that really likes to bark. So you might hear him chime in a few times if you haven't already. Well, I hope everyone had a good couple of weeks while I was away. Uh, I did get married, which is cool. Yeah! Uh, we went on our honeymoon down in Florida. Um... Interestingly, yes, it was right before uh, er, uh, Hurricane Irma had hit. Um, in one way, it was really cool because, uh, you know, the, there were there were virtually no crowds down there. We went to, uh, you know, we just kind of hung out on Daytona Beach, um, and then we went to um, Universal Studios, actually, over in Orlando. And, uh, yeah, it was fun because there were virtually no lines. We had a really good time. Uh, we drove down there, uh, and we live in Indiana, so it was about a, um, about a 13-hour drive. But getting back, ooh, that was rough. Everybody was wanting to get out of, uh, Florida, so everybody was driving away. Well, yeah, traffic was, was pretty rough getting back. Uh, ended up taking about a 20-hour drive. <laughs> so, it was rough, but we made it, and it, and it was fun, and it was a really fun honeymoon, and, uh, I'm glad we were able to do it. kind of getting the horns here. So I don't know if it's possible to tell or not just by, uh, by looking at it here, um, but I did previously paint this mini before, long before I did uh, any of these videos actually. Uh, that's kind of why it took me so long to actually get around to the Cyber Demon was because I already had him painted. I wasn't super satisfied with the way that I had painted him. I mean, I still liked him. I, I was still very proud of him and I liked him. Uh, but I kind of had to reconsider what I was going to do uh, for this. For one thing, I, I got the color of the uh, of the sort of the, the sort of chitin, the armor, uh, pretty off actually. Um, I did it as more of a uh, of a of a darker sort of ink. Um, dark blue, navy blue kind of color. 
Uh, that was the kind of color that I was looking at when I was uh, when I was looking at sort of screenshots and whoa, and gameplay of uh, of the Cyber Demon. But when I looked at the like high res images and I looked at uh, uh, the Cyber Demon and, and better lighting and all that, I noticed that the armor is actually more um, more green. Uh, so we'll get into that as we uh, as we do this. But I had to um, I had to do my uh, my paint stripping method for this guy, uh, and I did that uh, last night. Um, if you'd like, you can actually go to another video that's on my channel of the uh, of the Baron of Hell, uh, and you can see how uh, how I strip the paint off of minis. Um, probably not the most efficient or best way to do it, but it's the way that I know how to do it, and it works pretty well. So. Um, uh, you can uh, go to that video, and I'll put a link to, uh, to that video in the description below for this, uh, if that's something that you're interested in doing. But yeah, that's something that I had to do before I actually started doing this guy here. I had to get all the paint that I already had all on him off of him. Now, he does have some cybernetic bits on his back here. Uh, you know, right here and uh, right there. So just... Um, Try to go around those if you can, not a huge deal if you do uh, get some paint onto there. But we're going to leave them black, and we can go over them again with black later on if we need to. Uh, and then we're going to dry brush our steel color over that. So I've got the face and the head there done, so now it's just kind of a game of, uh, of going around the entire miniature and kind of looking at all the different fleshy bits, uh, and then just getting those. Um, this guy is very, very large. Now, he's not... He's actually not that detailed. He's not too tough to do uh, paint-wise. So you just kind of need to take your time with, uh, you know, with him and make sure that you're painting all the right spots. That's pretty much it. I mean, I say that with all of my videos, you know, all of my miniatures. I just say, hey, take your time. But, you know, this guy especially, just because he's got um, a lot of little little tiny crevices and um, uh, little nooks and crannies that you just got to make sure you, uh, that you paint. Might actually use a larger brush for tackling that specific bit right there. But we'll get into that if I need to. Alright, I am going to get this little bit right here on his back, right underneath this uh, this big cybernetic thing here. Uh, you're probably going to get a little bit of paint onto the cybernetic bits and onto the chitin uh, when you get into these really, really tiny areas like this. Uh, don't panic. Don't panic at all. No, no big deal. Uh, like I said, we, we can we can go over those colors uh, with another layer of black. You know, we can go over those other bits with another layer of black if we need to. It might get kind of tough to kind of figure out where the fleshy bits end and the metal parts begin uh, with this arm, especially. Um, but just kind of, you know, just just take it, you know, one piece at a time and kind of, you know, look at it as you do it. And, uh, you, you know, just just don't panic and take your time. And also, because these crevices are so, you know, deep into the miniature, it's not going to be hugely noticeable if, if you get just a little tiny bit of imperfections or anything like that. Okay. Tell you what, let's go, go on to the stomach right here. Yeah, because his gut's just, his gut is just hanging out. Um, and if you look too, the some of the chitin is actually kind of stripped away, revealing uh, like a rib cage here. I'm pretty sure that is supposed to be his actual rib cage, uh, so we'll go ahead and do those nice and bloody as well. There we go. That's nice and red. All right. Alright, I'm pretty sure everything on his back there is pretty much all chitin, so we're just going to leave that. Let's get in between this leg just a little bit. Not going to be a huge deal if, um, uh, if, if it's hard to reach, like kind of on the underside of his groin here. Um, I mean, it's because it, it's hard to even see it from, from any sort of position anyway, so not a huge deal if, if you can't really get in there, but, uh, you know, do what you can, of course. Um, doesn't hurt to just get a little bit of practice in, uh, no matter what. So I guess, um, very, very recently, like in the last, uh, week or so, they announced that, uh, Doom is gonna be ported over the to, uh, the Nintendo Switch. 
That's pretty cool. Um, I think that uh, I read somewhere that that's the first time uh, a Doom French a Doom game has been on an atten- on on a Nintendo console um, since Doom sixty four on the Nintendo sixty four, which was um, oh, I think it was about twenty years ago. Yeah, uh, so that's crazy. That's a that's a long time. Um, and yeah, that's exciting. I don't actually have a Switch, but um, I honestly might get one just because of that, uh, because I did, you know, I do kind of want to play Doom on the go, and I kind of want to know how, uh, uh, how that plays out, um, so I'll probably get a Switch at some point, well, maybe, I mean, I guess I also kind of want to wait for the game to actually come out, because I want to, you know, I kind of want to make sure there are no real performance issues or anything like that, now, id Software has a, has a pretty high, um, standard of quality with, uh, with the performance of their games, so I don't think that they would have done it unless they were confident that it was going to work. Um, so that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I think it's slated right now for a um, holiday 2017 release, so probably in the next uh, like few months. Um, yeah, I'll probably wait for it to come out, and uh, if, it, if it performs really well and if it's really fun, then uh, I might actually get a Switch and I might, uh, might, get, a, might get Doom. That's a little ways off. All right, that leg is looking pretty good. This guy is nice and nice and big and bulky. Oh, sorry. I'm uh, trying to hold him at such an angle that uh, I can show everything that I'm painting on camera uh, and paint it efficiently. And it's just kind of weird to hold him like this. <laughs> So I hope you're patient with me. He's got kind of an area here on the side of his uh, lower leg here. Let's get in between each of his uh, metal toes. Now here you are probably going to get um, some red paint onto the uh, onto the cybernetic bits. Uh, again, no big deal. Don't panic. We can go over those with black again, and then we can do our steel color. I'm almost running out of uh, red paint here. I'm probably going to need to get some more. Now here's another place where it might be kind of hard to tell where um, the cybernetic bits uh, begin and the fleshy parts end. Or vice versa, you know, however you want to put it. Um, But just kind of do whatever looks right. Um, You don't want to confuse the the chitinous armor with cybernetic bits or with fleshy bits, and you don't want to confuse them, you know, anything with each other, and all that, but just kind of take your time and do whatever looks right. There's no real wrong way to do it, it's just whatever way you want to do it. That looks pretty good. That looks all right. Okay. Yeah, I think I am going to get out some more paint, though. Okay, just once again, more, more of my deep red. Oh, <laughs> I'm a little chaotic sometimes. Okay, there we go. All right. Oh, what I also did too was I uh, I just kind of rinsed off my brush a little bit. Uh, it's it's kind of important to do that every now and then if you are uh, taking a long time for a particular step. You don't want paint to to really dry too much onto your brush. Um, so if you are doing something like this, a step that just kind of takes a little bit of time. Um, it, it is helpful and kind of important to, uh, just kind of rinse off your brush occasionally before, uh, before you soak up any more paint, because it can, uh, dry onto your brush, and that's something that you want to avoid. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of getting the underside of this arm here now. Uh, this arm, I've noticed, does have a lot more, uh, fleshy bits compared to, um... Uh, compared to the other sort of parts of the body. So just be prepared for a lot of red around here. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think I was kind of... I think I was treating this part right here as uh, like some armor, and I don't think that it actually is. So I'm going to go over it. Because... uh 
it looks like the sort of muscle tissue here. Uh, sorry, it's kind of hard to get at it uh, and, and have it be lit up. <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure that that's just part of the muscle tissue that goes here. Yeah. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Like I said, I did paint this guy once, but it was a long time ago. Um, so I really don't remember a lot of specific details of individual little pieces like this. I just kind of remember, excuse me, um, general kind of layouts and all that. But yeah, he's coming along pretty well, I think. I mean, we're still in the first step here. It's just that, uh, you know, when you've got a large mini like this, the steps just take longer. But yeah, don't rush it. Don't don't rush it. You're here to just kind of take your time, enjoy yourself, relax, and, and paint a beautiful miniature. And that's what we're here for, so... If that's what you want to do and that's why you're here, then there's no reason to rush. There's no reason to just blitz through it. Just kind of take your time and have some fun. Okay, and I think I've got that arm pretty much all the way done there. All right, next up, I'm gonna do the, um, the hand here. There we go. That looks neat. Okay. All right, and we're almost done with the the red under part here. We just kind of need to do this whole leg here. Yeah, the the back heel of this foot is really really exposed. So uh, just make sure that you get all of it. I was actually um, uh, hanging out with my buddy James over at uh, Thought Golem Games uh, before I uh, had my you know wedding stuff actually, um, and we're editing some some joint videos together, and we're going to be posting those to our uh, to our channels uh, in succession. So those will be coming up soon. But he he told me uh, uh, while we were shooting that that. Um, uh, now, he'd played through most of Doom, apparently, most of... He never finished it, apparently, because he got stuck on the Cyber Demon, actually. Um, he started playing the game on Ultra Violence, which, um... I mean, he's good at shooters, obviously. Um, he, uh, he's played through all of the Halo games on, like, the Legendary difficulties, I think, or whatever, whatever it is. I haven't played a lot of Halo, so I'm not very familiar with that. But I think that he's played through you know, uh, Halo on Legendary and a bunch of other shooters. So he, he's good at it, but I guess he, uh, he just got hung up on the Cyber Demon, um, and he kept getting killed by him. And, um, he actually asked me, like, oh, do you have any advice? Uh, way back when he was playing it. Uh, I didn't know that he never actually beat it, but, um, uh, I told him, oh, yeah, as long as you've got the remote detonation mod on the rocket launcher, you'll be pretty much set. Well, apparently he didn't even have that, uh, that mod at all, and, uh, so that made the fight, uh, pretty difficult for him, but, um, because I've played the video game a lot, uh, but yeah, he, he told me that I guess he tried several times after that, and, um, just never got around to beating him, <laughs> so I was like, oh, bummer, well, uh, oh, well, it just, it, I don't think it was his, his thing, to be honest, um, he just wasn't really hugely into Doom, which is fine, you know, everybody has their interests. But, uh... Yeah. Just kind of goes to show the, the might of the Cyber Demon. <laughs> okay. And I think we've got all of the base parts of the fleshy bits down. Now, always give your mini a little bit of a once-over. Always look over all of the different details just to make sure you didn't miss anything or anything like that. Here, I'll touch this up a little bit here. Okay. And I think that will be fine. Oh, 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 hey! This thing right here, on his thigh. Aha, see? That's why uh, in between steps, you know, when you're finishing up a step, still look over the entire miniature, because sometimes you'll miss things without, uh, without knowing it. All right. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, okay. So we're going to move on. 
I'm going to rinse off my brush. And I'm going to be moving on to uh, this fire red color. Um, the uh, label on here is, is pretty pretty nastily faded off here, but this is fire red. It's just a much lighter shade of red that we'll be uh, dry brushing over all the, uh, the dark red bits that we just did. All right, and I think that I am going to use a uh, small-sized Reaper Citadel dry brush. All right, and with dry brushing, you just want to make sure to load up a bunch of paint onto the bristles of your brush, but wipe off most of it to the point where your brush is almost dry. Not completely, but almost. That's why they call it dry brushing. Now, I was talking earlier about, uh, you know, not letting paint dry onto your brushes. Well, dry brushes are designed for this. They're, they're thicker, they've got um, longer bristles, and... Uh, uh, they're just a little bit hardier. But yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of paint loaded up onto the brush there, but it's still pretty dry. So let's uh, let's start with the face. And we're just going to dry brush over the whole face. Uh, don't worry about getting, you know, paint onto the teeth. Uh, you're going to do that. That's just inevitable. But uh, we'll go over those teeth with another color later on. Uh, same thing with the chitin. You're going to get some, some brush onto the chitin, but not a huge deal. It's not going to be too bright. It's not going to ruin anything. Um, I think that with the chitin, I'm not even going to bother with uh, doing black before we do our, uh, our, our, our base color for it. I think that we'll just go right into the base color, but I think that'll be fine. I don't think that's going to hurt anything. With dry brushing, make sure that whenever you've got really distinct lines on a miniature like this, so you know you see you've got uh, sort of individual, oh, I don't know what you call them. Um, they're not ribs, but they're just kind of muscle fibers or something like that. Go against the lines like this. You see like this kind of thing right here. And don't go with them like uh, like this, because that's how you get paint into the uh, the deep crevices, like in between each of those lines. And the point of dry brushing is that you want to do a lighter color over a darker color, and the the uh, the high contours will actually be brighter than the lower contours, and that's what kind of gives um, your really really nice shading effects onto your miniatures. Now there are people who use you know inks and washes and that kind of thing, and I just I don't use those. Um, I don't, I just, I never, I never made the point to really, like, learn how, and obviously use those if you want to get the best miniatures, those are the best paint jobs, but, uh, I like dry brushing for, for all of my different shading and all that, because, um, it's just really easy and it's really satisfying, and you don't need to buy different types of inks and washes, all you need are just paints, that's it, you just need your, your basic acrylic paints for miniatures, and you can do anything with them. Um, so I just, I just do dry brushing for everything. It's nice and satisfying. Anybody can do it, and you don't need to spend a bunch of extra money on inks and washes. Um, but like I said, I don't want to, you know, uh, belittle people who use inks or washes, because obviously that's how you get the good paint jobs. Those are how you get the nice, really good, pro-quality paint jobs. But I just, I just don't do those. It's a personal opinion. It's a personal choice. Uh, you don't have to do that. Um... But uh, I, I like to do this method because it's really simple, it's, it's easy to teach, anybody can do it, and it's really satisfying. That's why I like dry brushing. But yeah, that face really, really shows up there, doesn't it? It looks good. All right. Let's go ahead and do his guts here with, the, with that rib cage. Like I said, when you do this, you are definitely going to get some red onto the chitin, but no big deal. I think you'll be fine. The reason why we do this first, actually, is because uh, you want to start with all of... Because if you do use dry brushing for all of your sort of shading effects, you start with the low contours first, and then you, you kind of work your way out. Man, the Cyber Demon sure is a cool sculpt, though. I do really, really love the miniatures of the Doom board game. Um, Fantasy Flight has just been really good over the years at getting just better and better miniatures for their games. I mean, the uh, the miniatures for the Doom 3 board game were were okay, you know, but they haven't, you know, they're not they're not great. Uh comparatively, the minis that come with the newest edition of the Doom board game, oh man, these these are just beautiful. I mean, look at that. Look at the level of detail and just the 
the complexity, but at the same time the simplicity behind the sculpts. I mean, they're just they're just beautiful. I love them. I really like Fantasy Flight as a game company. I'm not super wild about some of their games, um, but uh, they they really know their stuff, and they're really good at selling games um, to people who want specific things. Like I'm I'm so glad I'm so glad that they made a Doom board game. This is just this is just awesome. I love it. All right. It's coming along pretty well. Okay. So we've got this arm pretty much completely done here. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, about dry brushing that I like, is just that it doesn't really take a lot of time. It doesn't take too long to do these, these really nice things that bring out the, the high contours and the details. It's just so worth it. I love it. Kind of get in between here. That's looking pretty good. All right, I like that. Now for the for the lines that are that are really really deep in there like uh, like in this thigh right here, honestly even if you don't go over it at all, I don't think it's gonna matter too much. I don't think it's gonna be too noticeable. I'll still just kind of touch it up there a little bit. You know that kind of kind of brings it out a little bit there. But I mean even if you don't do it, I honestly I think you'll be fine. Uh, you know this other deep part right here, just kind of do it real quickly there, but. Uh, if, if you if you really are, uh, are are very picky about not getting paint onto the chitin or whatever, you can just uh, you can just leave those really deep points uh, the way they are. There we go. Got that heel looking pretty good. Right, and we're about done, I think, with all of the red bits. It's already coming along. He's all, already looking pretty good. The last thing that I kind of want to do here is I just kind of want to go over all of the really, really prominent parts, like the back heel, the elbow, and the head itself. I'm going to really, really brighten up those areas. gonna rinse off my dry brush real quick and after we've got the uh, the the base you know red color down there we're actually gonna move on to our entrail pink color Be oh, excuse me because when you look at the high-res pictures of uh, of the cyber demon actually he's uh, his flesh bits have out have a lot of pink to him actually which kind of makes sense you know if, if they're kind of you know related demonically to the uh, to the pinky demon or to the baron of hell well then yeah they're they're actually pretty pink uh so i'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit of that uh that pink color there and we're just gonna kind of lightly go over the fl the face and the, the the actual skin bits i'm gonna leave off the um uh the the sort of exposed guts there but we're just gonna go over you know like i said the face and uh uh, and the arms and the and the uh, and, and the, the the legs and that kind of thing. And it's not going to be too bright, you know. I kind of still wanted to have a little bit of that red going on, but uh, yeah, it turns out that uh, the cyber demon has actually uh, got got some pink to him, or at least the 2016 cyber demon does. I you know when when the game first uh, was announced and they showed the cyber demon, I was kind of I. I was not wild about the newly designed Cyber Demon. I think I preferred the classic sort of Minotaur-esque thing. Um, but I think that this new redesign of the Cyber Demon fits the aesthetic of the new game. So I'm okay with it overall. Even if the first time I saw it, I was like, I don't know if I like that. Well, it's grown on me. <laughs> I do like it. Okay, I'm just going to get the sort of... 
ankle here. There we go. Just a little bit of pink to kind of to kind of brighten them up a little bit. Give them more of a fleshy skin kind of look. There we go. All right. And I think that's pretty much it for all of the skin bits. I think the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the, um, oh, what should we do? What do you think? Should we do the chitin first or should we do the armor, like the, the actual cybernetic bits first? I'm kind of thinking, let's do the cybernetic bits first. Yeah, because um, if we want to start with the, the sort of deeper contours and work our way out, there's this little cybernetic part in here that's deep into the chitin. So let's start with the cybernetic bits and then work our way out. And then after that, I think I'm actually going to wrap up part one of this video, um, just because um, I don't have the best editing software, and um, uh, I can only render so much with each video. <laughs> so after we do this, I will call it for part one, and but I'm going to instantly start recording as soon as I'm done with this, and I'll post part two separately. So let's move on. We're going to go back to our um, pure black here. Now, like I said, um, when we were doing the dry brushing there, we were getting some uh, um, some of the red and some of the pink over all of the, uh, the cybernetic... Well, not all of them. Over some of the cybernetic bits that we were doing. And that's something that we want to avoid, actually. So let's go back over any of the cybernetic bits uh, that we can uh, using this pure black. And then when we dry brush our steel color over it, it will look much more normal. But yeah, just kind of go around the entire miniature here. Uh, look for all the cybernetic bits that are supposed to be uh, cybernetic that might have a little bit of uh, a little bit of red or a little bit of pink on them, and just kind of go over those so that we can dry brush some steel and honestly that's not that's not too bad yeah it's the back here that's the big one get these little kind of bolts that are on his back here that I was talking about earlier that's not too bad okay um, underneath his leg here, I don't know if it's, it's if it's showing up very well in camera or not, but I didn't do a great job of getting the base coat uh, on the back of his knee on this leg here, so I'm just going to touch that up while I'm back here too. And like I said, we're just doing the cybernetic bits here. I, I really, really do think that the... Um, that the actual chitin bits will be fine if we're going to go over the color that we're going to use on that later on. I don't think that it's necessary to do um, to go over all of the edges of those with black. I think it'll be fine. Okay, let's get the metal toes here. Okay, and I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think we've got all the different cybernetic bits that we want to have cybernetic be black now so that we can do our uh, coat of uh, um, uh, steel over it. So I'm going to rinse off my brush. All right, and I'm going to go back to uh, my small dry brush, and I'm going to get out my honed steel color. All right, just get a little bit of paint onto here. All right, and then I'm going to dry brush all of the steel bits with this uh, honed steel color here. Uh, once again, uh, by dry brushing, you are inevitably going to get some paint onto the, the chitin here. Uh, don't worry about it, because like I said, I think that when we go over the chitin with the, the color we're going to use later on, I think it'll work out fine. So, no worries. Yeah, as you can see, I got a lot of silver onto the surrounding area there, but no big deal. go that knee looks pretty good get these toes right here cyber toes <laughs> all 
Now do be careful. Uh, try not to get, you know, the steel color onto the fleshy bits that you already did, uh, because those are done. You know, you want to try not to actually paint over those. All right, and he's got this sort of piston coming out of his ankle here. Man, my dry brush is actually kind of getting into rough shape here. I think I need to get a, a new one eventually. Because it's, uh, it's getting really, really flayed there. But that's okay. I mean, not, you know, brushes don't last forever. You sometimes just gotta, just gotta replace your brushes. That's just kind of the the circle of mini painting life. <laughs> sort of tubes and stuff on the back of his knee here. Let's get this back plate. All right, he's got some tubes coming along the side here. Once again, don't worry about getting paint onto the chitin, but do try to make sure not to get paint onto the flesh. All right, and I think I've got all of that done. The next thing that I'm gonna do, actually, is um, I'm gonna paint the arm here, the entirety of the arm. Now, uh, the arm itself is not actually steel colored. It's actually got more of a um, sort of copper or brass color to it. But if you start with this layer of, um, shat of, uh, of honed steel here, and then you dry brush your copper color over it, that's gonna bring it out a lot better. I'm actually already out of steel, so let me get some more out here. And because there are certain parts of the uh, the cybernetic arm here, the, the arm cannon, uh, that actually are just regularly steel anyway. So it's easier to just do the whole thing in steel, uh, and then just go over the brass parts with a brass color um, later on. Right. And he's coming along. He's actually coming along pretty well there, I think. All right. I think I've got all of the cybernetic bits painted steel there, which is what I was going for. Let's just kind of touch up this little thingy here real quick. All right, and after, when we're done with the whole thing, I'm gonna go over all of the, uh, the little bolts here. Uh, to just kind of touch up and do uh, do that kind of thing, but we'll we'll save that for the end. And I think that with that, I'm actually going to call this the end of part one because, like I said, my computer can only render uh, so much video footage all at once. Um, so I will place a link to part two at the bottom of this video. Um, I'll try to release them concurrently so that uh, you know you can just get to part one and then part two right off the bat. So I'll see you on the next part. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.